This is the first lecture on text unit 7, which is on molecules and bonding. Um, the first lecture is on Lewis structures. If you remember, molecules are held together by bonds, and this is the unit which we start thinking about how a bond forms. Um, to think about that, the simplest molecule, uh, well, the simplest, yeah, the simplest stable molecule is H2. Two atoms, two electrons. Each hydrogen atom has an electron, remember, and a 1s orbital. A bond between two atoms is a pair of shared electrons. When you bring these two hydrogen atoms close together, these two electrons in the 1s orbital are able to be shared between the two hydrogen atoms. They spend most of their time between the two hydrogen atoms and effectively create a, a sandwich of negative charge that allows these two nuclei to be close together. As otherwise, nuclei with positive, each with positive charges, would not like to be together. Notice that when this bond forms, two electrons make a bond. Through sharing, which is what the bond is, the valence subshell of each hydrogen atom is filled. This hydrogen atom, through sharing, effectively has two electrons, therefore its 1s orbital is filled. This hydrogen, through the sharing process, has two electrons and its valence S subshell is filled. Yeah. So this is the valence S subshell. This is a is filled. This is as close to a hydrogen atom can get to a quote unquote octet. So this is so this electron sharing is very stable for the hydrogen atom. This type of sharing bond is called a covalent bond, and all the bonds that stick atoms together in molecules are of this type. This bond can be shown by a line connecting two hydrogen atoms or nuclei. All right, remember, this bond represents a pair of electrons. Now consider F2 molecules. Each F atom has seven valence electrons. One would be needed by each to complete the valence S and P subshells. In other words, I'll refer you to this orbital diagram for fluorine down here. And in particular, the valence 2S and 2P subshells. Fluorine needs one electron to fill the subshells and have a quote-unquote octet. And in the case of this molecule, that can accomplish that by sharing. Here, we see the two shared electrons in fluorine. You could think of this bond as being formed from the two, from the unpaired electron in the orbital diagram for each fluorine atom in the previous picture. Here are the six electrons in the fluorine atom, see back again the orbital diagram, that are paired already. So this type of drawing displays lone pairs on each fluorine atom. Each pair of dots represents a lone pair on fluorine. This represents the shared pair of electrons. Notice each this fluorine has two, four, six, eight electrons through sharing. Likewise, this fluorine has two, four, six, and then eight electrons through sharing. This picture, which shows the lone pairs on fluorine and the pair of shared electrons form from the one unpaired electron on each fluorine. Again, go back and look at the diagram to remind you. This type of pictures are called Lewis dot structures or often simply Lewis structures. You've seen one now for fluorine and for hydrogen. Remember that these are elemental molecules. You'll see in this unit, well, and in the following 
well, and in this lecture and the following lectures, that Lewis structures can be made for any type of compound, any type of molecule, any situation where atoms are stuck together with bonds. To make a Lewis structure for a molecule, first find out how the atoms are stuck together. We've had a pretty such an easy situation now with H2 and F2. Okay. Condensed structural formulas indicate how atoms are stuck together. Uh, so for example, here's an example of a condensed structural formula. Consider CH3 and H2. This way of writing this formula means that three hydrogens are attached to carbon and two hydrogens are attached to the nitrogen atom. So when you draw a structural formula it looks like this. Here are the three hydrogens stuck to the carbon, two hydrogens stuck to the nitrogen. And you can go ahead and stick a bond, a line, well lines, to stick all these atoms together. Each of these has to represent a bond. Remember, each of these are two electrons. How many electrons are going to ultimately be in the picture? Depends on how many are available. Molecules use valence electrons in bonding, so first count the number of valence electrons available. You can use your periodic table to help you with this. Just count, start at the left and count across. Carbon has four valence electrons. The 2s and 2p valence electrons. 2s, 2s, and 2p valence electrons. Or nitrogen, one place over on the periodic table, has five valence electrons. Hydrogen only has one electron and it's a valence electron. So that adds one, two, three, four, five valence electrons to the picture. In other words, there are a total of five plus five plus four, 14 valence electrons. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve are in the picture. Two more to be added. All right. You finish this diagram before moving onward. Right, again, there are 14 valence electrons. You can use a periodic table to help count the valence electrons. Remaining two electrons, just complete the octet for the nitrogen. Notice the high nitrogen and the carbon each get eight electrons through sharing. Remember, hydrogen atoms are satisfied or have an octet of two electrons. In other words, each of the bonded hydrogen atoms are satisfied and don't need any additional electrons. Each has two through sharing. Consequence of this is that in molecules, hydrogen will always only form one bond. All right, let's look at another one, CH2NH. You should be able to use the periodic table to help you determine that there are 12 valence electrons in this molecule. Draw a structural formula and complete the structure before moving on in the presentation. sure you were able to draw a structural formula. You may have had trouble completing the structure unless you read ahead in the text to learn about double or triple bonds. This is a, in this lecture, this is the first example of the double, a double bond Lewis structure. Double bonds or even triple bonds can be used to complete Lewis structures. Double bonds are shorter and stronger than single bonds, and triple bonds are shorter and stronger than double. Let's look what we've done here. We have 12 valence electrons. All 12 appear in the fixture. Two, four, six, eight being this lone pair over here. 10 for this bond, and then we have another bond, which is another 
two electrons, so 12. So the carbon and nitrogen each have two bonds. Well, the carbon and the nitrogen are connected by two bonds. By sharing, this carbon has two, four, six, eight electrons, so it has its octet. The nitrogen has two, four, six, eight electrons, so it has its octet. Remember, when you make a Lewis structure, each atom should have an octet, and the number of electrons in your picture should be equal to the number of valence electrons. Charge adds or subtracts to the number of valence electrons. For example, consider ammonium in H4+. You remember the polyatomic ion. If you count valence electrons for nitrogen and four hydrogens, there are nine valence electrons. Positive charge means one has been taken away, so NH4+, plus, the ammonium cation, has eight valence electrons. Now here is a molecule without a condensed structural formula. This is the first example of one where the central atom, the atom all the others are stuck to, appears first in the formula. Nitrogen is the central atom and four hydrogens surround it. We connect all the, uh, the hydrogens to the nitrogens with bonds. The hydrogens are called outer atoms in this case. They're only connected to one atom. Central atom is connected to more than one. When we put in the uh, bonds to stick the atoms together, we find that nitrogen has its octet. Each hydrogen has two electrons through sharing. And we're out of valence electrons, so this is the correct Lewis structure for an H4. The cyanide polyatomic ion has two atoms, cyanide and carbon and nitrogen stuck together. It has a negative charge, 10 valence electrons. The only way to draw a Lewis structure to satisfy the octet rule for both with 10 valence electrons is this. Carbon has two, four, six, eight through sharing. Nitrogen has two, four, six, eight through sharing. Total number of electrons in the picture is two, four, six, eight, ten. So this is a correct Lewis structure for CN. Has ten valence electrons because the negative, again, if we added carbon and nitrogen, we would count nine valence electrons. Inclusion of the negative charge will adds an electron so that there are 10 valence electrons. Okay, again, and we just saw this in the last example, ammonium. Essential atoms come at the beginning of formulas. So SO3, uh, sulfur is essential atom. SO3 has a sulfur atom with three O's attached. Oxygens are called outer atoms in this case. They're just attached to the sulfur. If you count, you will observe there are 24 valence electrons in the molecule. All right, so at this point, you should be able to attempt the Lewis structure before moving on. And you've been introduced to lone pairs, multiple bonds, everything you need to know. you probably find that you are able to draw three Lewis structures for SO3. I show them down here. Notice that if you look at any one of the structures, let's pick this one, there are 24 valence electrons, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24. Each atom has an octet through sharing, sulfur has 8, this oxygen has two, four. I oh, had to correct the picture. Actually, I had to make sure that this electron were in the these electrons were in the picture. This oxygen has an octet. This oxygen has an octet. This oxygen has an octet, and the sulfur has an octet. Twenty-four valence electrons in the picture. 
Sulfur is the central atom, each of the oxygens is an outer. There are two other way different Lewis structures it's possible to draw which satisfy the octet rule. And I show this one here, and I show this one here. This is an example of resonance. More than one Lewis structure can be made. Now you have to be careful with resonance. The difference between resonance structures is that you can leave all the nuclei, all the atoms in place, and get to resonance structures just by moving electrons around. So it's very important to have the same shape for all the atoms when you're drawing resonance structures so you can see that the only difference is the way the electrons are distributed. So, for example, in this one, the double bond is here, and this one, the double bond is here. Here, the double bond is over to the left. When this occurs, the real life, or what's actually going on with the electrons, is an average <clears throat> of all three of the Lewis structure. I use average in quotes. It means none of these things is really the case. This has, uh, well, you'll see that this has uh, effects. One is that the order of any bond is really is the average of the order in all the resonance structures. In this case, there are three resonance structures. The top SO bond, this one, this one in this structure, this one in this structure, has an order, well, an order of two here, an order of one here and an order of one here. The average order because of resonance is the sum of all three orders, two plus one plus three, one, divided by the number of resonance structures, which is three, one, two, three, or four thirds, or one and a third. It was the bond order here. So the bond order of this, sorry, of this top bond that we're talking about is not two, it's not one, it's not quite a single bond, it's not quite a double bond, it's something between the two, its order is one and a third. All right. This concludes the first lecture on Lewis structures.